Hello everyone. Hey, welcome to Summit Church Fenton Online. I'm so glad you've joined me today and I really hope that everyone had a very happy Thanksgiving and uh, I hope you had turkey, but I hope you didn't eat too much. I think I think I made it may have eaten too much. Uh, I know I had too much pecan pie every year on Thanksgiving. My wife makes uh, well, she makes a great turkey and great great meal. Wonder she's a wonderful cook, but she makes it well she makes this sweet potato casserole and I mean that is something else and it's it's like dessert and we've had that every year since I've known her and and that is great and that's almost as good good as her pecan pie and that is the best and so I always look forward to that every year and so anyway so I I ate a little too much but uh, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna work it off later today when I go out and run <laughs> I try to run run about five or six miles almost every day, so so I so I can eat a little more at Thanksgiving uh, as long as I go run it off, run an extra half mile or something. But anyway, so I I hope you had a great Thanksgiving. You know we have so much to be thankful for, and uh, and so uh, anyway, with that being said, let's get into the Word of God uh, today. I want to talk to you about the importance of keeping our mouth shut when we'd really like to shoot them off. <laughs> Is anybody out there like me that you, you wanted to shoot your mouth off at times? I tell you what, uh, I know I have, and uh, there's some times I've shot my mouth off and I shouldn't have. And so uh, uh, but what I want to do is I want to talk to you today about uh, the importance of keeping our mouths, our mouths quiet, keep it, keep them, keeping them shut, when we really like to shoot them off. And so I'm titling this message, Bite Your Tongue. Bite, you know, bite your tongue. You know what that means. And when someone says bite your tongue, that means be quiet, don't say anything. And, uh, and so let's, let's go into the Word of God and see what the Word of God says about biting our tongues and uh, keeping quiet. So in James, the first chapter and the 19th verse, uh, the New International Version says, My dear brothers, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak. Now listen to that, slow to speak. And, uh, and, and I, I've, I heard somebody say this years ago, and it's so true. We've got two ears and one mouth. We ought to do twice as much listening as we do talking. But the Bible says here that we ought to be slow to speak. Or we'll put it another way. We ought to be quick to bite our tongues and stay silent uh, because, you know, shooting our mouths off can, can get us in a lot of trouble and it can, can hurt people and, and make, make situations, uh, you know, shooting our mouths off can make a bad situation even worse. And so, so anyway, that's what I want to talk to you about today. And, you know, of course, we're approaching Christmas. And, and have you ever heard that song, 12 Days of Christmas? Well, <laughs> with that in mind, I want to give you 12, 12 areas or 12 things that the Bible says or 12, 12 situations the Bible gives us in which we ought to bite our tongues. Now, there may be more than these 12 that I give you, but if you do these 12, it'll, it'll get you a long way down the road, okay? So let's see, let's, let's look at 12, uh, 12 situations we can get in where we ought to bite our tongues. The first one is when, uh, when we have no idea what to say about a matter. When we have no idea what, what to say. We have no, no idea. We have no uh, educated uh, uh, means by which or no, no, we're not informed on an issue. And, uh, and, and the Bible says in, in that case, we ought to just keep quiet. You know, a Proverbs uh, 17 verse 28 New International Version says, even a fool is thought wise if he keeps silent. Now you think about that, a fool. Even a fool is thought to be wise if they keep silent. And, uh, and then, and discerning, the fool is thought to be wise if he keeps silent and discerning if he holds his tongue or bites his tongue. Now you think about that. A fool, the Bible says, can look smart if he'll bite his tongue, if he'll just keep quiet. And, uh, and, and you just think about that. You know, if, if, if you don't know something about a certain issue or a certain matter, 
and, and you don't say anything, nobody, nobody will know that you don't know anything about that, you know. <laughs> the Bible says if we'll bite our tongues, that, that even a fool, if he'll bite his tongue and stay quiet, can look smart concerning a situation. So the first one is, is that if you're in a situation and you just have no, you know, <laughs> you don't know anything about it. And I've been in a lot of those over the years myself where I was in a situation, I knew nothing about it. You just stay quiet. Just stay quiet. And, you know, other people, they may think you're the smartest one in the room, but you don't know anything about, about, that, about that situation. So, so let's learn to bite our tongues when we have no idea, no, in, no, no educated opinion uh, whereby to speak. Just, just stay quiet. Everybody will think you're smart. Okay, okay so, so, so that's the first, the first area to bite our tongue when we have no idea. No, no education really on a certain situation from which to speak. Then the second uh, thing is, is when we're wrongly accused. When we're wrongly accused. And I think all of us over the years, at one time or another, multiple times maybe, have been wrongly accused of things that we didn't do. And, and notice 1 Peter 2.23, 1 Peter 2.23, New International Version, says this, when they hurled their insults at Jesus, he did not, watch this, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. Now, you know Jesus, our Lord, our Savior, he was perfect. And you know, he got accused of a lot of things he didn't do. And, and when they took him, before they crucified him, they brought false witnesses up against him and they accused him of, of, of things. And during that whole time, he kept silent. The book of Isaiah says that he, as a sheep before its shears is silent, he opened not his mouth. So Jesus, when they were accusing him of all kinds of things that he was not guilty of, he did not respond. He, he gave no response. And uh, I tell you what, he's, he, is, he is our example, and we need to follow his example. And, and, I, and I've learned this over the years when, because, you know, if you pastor a church as long as I have, I tell you what, almost three decades and counting, you're going to get accused of things that, you know, wrongly accused of things, things you know you didn't do, but people accuse you of, of this, that, or the other. And, uh, and I've learned this, the best response is no response, just like Jesus. He gave no response when they were accusing him of all kinds of things that weren't true. He gave no response. Now, our flesh, I know if your flesh is like my flesh, you know, I mean, we want to, just want to retaliate. I know I've had, had, had folks over the years, they'll you know, that they'll say something or, or nowadays, you know, they'll put something up on social media or whatever. And, and, you know, I've already sat down and wrote up a, you know, a response, you know, on my, on my computer and, and responded point by point, proving them completely and totally wrong of what they were accusing me of. And then, you know, and then, and then the Holy Spirit gets a hold of me and, you know, he'll just on the inside, you know, let me know, remind me of, what I'm telling you right now, no response, no response, no response is the best response. And you know what you do? You do just what our Lord did, what Jesus did. The Bible said he entrusted himself to the heavenly father who judges justly. And that's what he did. And that's what we need to do. Just, just, just don't respond to those false accusers. Just no response. You know, just don't respond to them. Just pay no, it's hard not to pay any attention to them, but pay no attention to it. Don't respond to it and just leave it in the hands of the Heavenly Father. And the Bible says, God says, vengeance is mine, I will repay. And so you just leave it to the Lord. You don't need to try to get back at those people and get revenge. And, 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 and I, I tell you what, trying and responding to false accusers and, and trying to respond to them point by point it's not worth your time. It just isn't. They're, they're not, <laughs> they're all, all really, that's what they want you to do. They want to draw you into turmoil and argument and 
fussing and fighting. And, and just don't stoop down on their level. Just, just don't get down in the mud where they live. You stay up above and walk with the Lord and, and just don't respond to them. Pay no attention to it. They don't know what they're talking about anyway. And uh, you just, you know, you just go right on and, and, and entrust it to the hands of the Heavenly Father. And, uh, and I tell you what, if they don't repent, he'll deal with them. He'll deal with them. You know, what, is the Bible, what did Jesus say? When they smite you on the one cheek, turn to them the other also. That doesn't mean you're a punching bag for the world. That just means when you take your boxing gloves off and you, you turn the other cheek, then the Lord puts his boxing gloves on and he'll deal with that, those, those false accusers on your behalf. And I tell you what, he'll, he'll try to get them to repent, but if they, if they won't, eventually he'll deal with them and he'll, he, he can be stern and, and, uh, and they won't like the outcome if they don't repent, you know. So just when you're falsely accused, pay no attention to it as best you can. But whatever you do, don't respond. No response is the best response. And then the third area where we should bite our tongues is when we don't understand why the Lord isn't doing something about our situation as we would like. You know, uh, I've had situations over the years and the Lord wasn't, it didn't seem like he was doing anything about it or responding as quickly as I would have liked or responding really at all. And in Lamentations, the book of Lamentations, the third chapter, 26th verse, New International Version, says, it is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. So another time that we need to bite our tongues is when God isn't responding the way we think he should or as quickly as we think he should. The Bible says to wait quietly, notice quietly, wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. And the Lord will respond. He'll do what needs to be done. Now, it may not be what we would like or as in the time we would like, but in that meantime, when he's not responding to something the way we think he should, we just wait quietly, quietly. See, bite our tongues. And, you know, don't start crabbing and complaining why he's not doing this or doing that. Some people get angry with the Lord and start mouthing off even to the Lord. Don't do that. Don't do that. You don't want to do that. Uh, but just wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. And then the fourth one is, when, when, when we need to bite our tongues, is when, uh, when we wouldn't want someone to find out about what we've said about them. Now, <laughs> think about that. This is a time to bite your tongue when, when you start to say something about somebody and you wouldn't want them to find out what you're, what you're saying about them. You know, uh, Luke, the 12th chapter and the third verse, NIV, New International Version, the Lord said, What you have said in the dark will be heard in the daylight. And what you whispered in the ear in the inner rooms will be proclaimed from the, from the roofs. So what he's saying there is what we say in secret. The, the whispers, you know, when we're whispering and, and, and talking about somebody behind their back, you know, that kind of thing. You know, he said it's going to come to the light. It will. It may, not, it may not later today. It may not tomorrow. It may not come out next week, next month, next year, or, or even, you know, next several years or decade or whatever, but his words are true and eventually it'll come out. He said, what you've said in the dark will be heard in the daylight. What you've whispered uh, uh, in the ear in the inner rooms will be proclaimed from the roofs. So, you know, when we wouldn't want somebody to find out what we've been, been saying or talking bad about them or whatever, just don't say it at all. You know, something that I've tried to practice in my life, when I start talking you know, uh, 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 start talking about somebody. But when I'm talking, when someone comes up in a conversation and somebody asks me about so-and-so or whatever, and believe me, that comes up when you, when you pastor a church. What I've tried to practice is this. When I respond, when somebody asks me and they say, they say well, what about so-and-so? But when I give a response, if I give a response, when I give a response, I always try to do it as though that person that isn't present, I pretend that they are. Just pretend that they're in the room. And so, so the response I give to this person over here who's asked me about so-and-so, uh, I give the response to that person as though that other person were right there in the room. And you know, that, that'll, that'll keep you out of a lot of, a lot of trouble right there. Uh, because I'll guarantee it to you, 
whatever you say to so-and-so over here about so-and-so over there, eventually so-and-so over there is going to find out about it. So, so if you say something in private that you would have nobody, you would have no problem with anyone hearing it in public, then you're in good shape. So, so the fourth thing on the list here, 12 things that you need to bite your tongue, situations in which you need to bite your tongue, is when you wouldn't want you know, and let me just read here, when you wouldn't want someone to find out what you've said about them, you know, uh, behind their back, so to speak. So uh, it's a good time. And actually, you know, most of the time when somebody asks you about so-and-so, just bite your tongue. Just just don't say anything. Just, just you're better off. But sometimes I'm just telling you, especially when you're pastoring a church and someone asks you about this situation over here, you know, I think you get what I'm talking about. Sometimes you, it, it is helpful to give a response, but just respond in such a way that if it came out public, what you said, because it will, according to the words of the Lord, that, that when that person that you're, if you're discussing, they find out about it, they'd have no problem with what you said, okay? So do that, and it'll, it'll get you a long way down the road for the good. And then the fifth area is when you need to bite your tongue is when you don't really mean what you are saying. I think we've all been guilty of this at a time or two when we, we say things and we don't really mean what we're saying. Ecclesiastes, the fifth chapter and the fifth verse, Ecclesiastes 5.5 5 in the NIV uh, version says, It is better not to vow than to make a vow and not fulfill it. It's better not to vow than to make a vow and not fulfill it. So, you know, just just say what you mean and mean what you say and uh, and, and I, just a good example you know like like lunch lunch you know you tell somebody oh we'll go to lunch sometime uh, you know and you may have no intention of ever going to lunch with that person but you just being nice and whatnot you say well let's go to lunch sometime we'll go to lunch sometime but you have no intention of, of, of going you know, and, and then and then down the road, they, they call you up and say, hey, you told me you'd go to lunch with me. And then you're kind of like, hava, hava, hava. <laughs> you don't really want to go, but you gave your word. And, you know, uh, I, I tell you what, that, that's, that's, that's an example I could give several others. But, uh, oh, here, I'll give you one. Here, here, this is a good one. This is a good one. I, so don't tell somebody you're going to go to lunch with them if you're not really going to go. But here's another. Here's a good one. I just thought of a good one. Uh, I've stood at the door for tw some 27 years greeting uh, visitors as they, as they, you know, they visited and they're leaving. And they'll say, oh, pastor, that was, this church is first time visitor now. Oh, this is the greatest church ever. This is a wonderful church. My first time here today. And all oh, your message was wonderful. And I just, this, the worship moved me and it was just, Oh, it was just great. Now, I will see you next week. And, and you will see me every week here. Every time the door is open, you will, uh, you will see me. <laughs> and then you never see them ever again. And you think, oh, my gosh. You know, and, and so they, you know, it would, you know, I'd have more respect for them if they would have never said anything to me about coming back than to tell me they're coming back and then, and then they never do. Uh, <laughs> I'm thinking of another fella. He told me, bless his heart, but I got a lot of respect for this guy. He said this. He said, don't ever look for me to come to your church because you're never going to see me there. Now, it's sad that he said that. I would, I would have wished that he would have come, but he told me many years ago, he said, don't ever look for me to be at your church. I'll never be there. And you know what? He, I got a lot of respect for this guy because you know what? He never did show up. Now, I wish he had, but you get my point here. He told me the truth. I can handle the truth. You know, I can handle the truth. Like in that one movie, I can handle the truth. Just tell me the truth. He told me the truth. And I've got more. And, and he was not a saved individual. Sad to say. But he told me the truth. And I've got more respect for him than these Christians that have come to visit over the last three decades, just about, you know. And they come, they say, these visitors. And they'll say, oh, we'll see you next week. Love this church. See you next week. You don't ever see him again. See, I don't have I don't have any respect for that. So mean what you say, say what you mean, and it's better not to vow than to vow and not fulfill it. All right. So if you don't mean it, don't say it. Don't tell somebody you're going to go to lunch with them if you if, if unless you intend to go to lunch with them someday. Okay. Anyway, 
Anyway, so then the, then the sixth thing, the sixth area where we need to bite our tongues is when we're disgruntled with our tasks, the things we do every day, whether it's your job or whatever it is, your daily tasks. The Bible says in Philippians 2.14, again, the New International Version, says, do everything without complaining. Do everything without complaining. So tell you what, in your everyday tasks, you know, you start complaining, bite that tongue. Stop complaining. Don't complain. Bite your tongue. Uh, you know, you're gonna when you start complaining, you know, <laughs> bite that tongue, all right? And don't say anything because the Bible says to do everything without complaining. All right, so now we're halfway there. Let's keep going. We've got six areas we looked at where we need to bite our tongues. Now, number seven is is this. Uh, we need to, let me read from my notes. A wrong word at the wrong time can be disastrous. A wrong word at the wrong time can be disastrous. And uh, let, let me read here. Proverbs 15, 23. This is the New King James Version. says this. A word spoken in due season, how good it is. See, you can speak a, 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 a word a right word at the right time, and it's very, very good and, and can, can do wonderful things. But the reverse of that's true. A, a wrong word at the wrong time can be disastrous. And, uh, and, and I, I've watched over the years, and I've watched people speak the right word at the right time, and it just brought such wonderful, wonderful uh, uh, results. But I've also watched people, and I've, I've done it myself. I've spoken the right word at the right time. It was just a blessing. And, and I've watched other people. I've done it myself where we said the wrong thing at the wrong time, and it, it just made a, made a bad situation worse. So, uh, so, you know, just realize that be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And, and don't speak a wrong word at all, but certainly don't do it at, at the wrong time. Um, you know, if, and I, I've trained myself over the years to be real sensitive to, to the Holy Spirit and in a situation and I, I start to start to speak and I've had him a, a few times over the years, several times, just check me on the inside, you know, just where I was going to say something and, 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 and I, I didn't say anything. And, uh, boy, I, I was so glad I did because it would have been a, the wrong word at, at the wrong time. And uh, it would have it would have made a, a bad situation worse. You know, Proverbs twenty five eleven. This is in the Message translation. It says the right word at the right time is like a custom made piece of jewelry. Now you think about that. The right word at the right time is like a custom made piece of jewelry. You know, and a custom made piece of jewelry that that's a nice thing. But uh, so the right word at the right time is like a custom made piece of jewelry. But but you know. The wrong word at the wrong time is like a $1 Mickey Mouse watch. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's just the truth. You speak the wrong word at the wrong time, like I've said already, but I want to say it again, it can make a, a bad situation even worse. So let's be sensitive to the Holy Spirit and, uh, and, and let's, uh, you know, and, and, and you get in a situation, just, just be quick to bite your tongue. Uh, uh, you know, there's been so many times where I've walked away from a situation and, and, and I said, oh, I'm so glad, I'm so glad I didn't say, say such and such at that, you know, in, in, in that meeting or whatever it was, because it would have made a bad situation worse. So let's be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Let's speak, uh, let, let's speak the right word at the right time. Uh, words in due season, right words in due season can be a blessing. Uh, and uh, let's not say the wrong thing. Don't say the wrong thing at the wrong time. Just don't do it. Bite your tongue, okay? And then here's another one, number eight. Time to bite your tongue is when you're angry. Is when you're angry. Uh, Ephesians 4, 26 in the NIV says, In your anger, do not sin. See, we all get angry. The Bible says we can be angry and, and sin not. I mean, anger is an emotion. It's a human emotion. We just like we get happy, get sad, you know, we can be angry. 
the important thing is, is when you get angry, if you get angry, don't feel badly. You're just human, okay, like everyone else. You're, we all get angry at times. The important thing is, is when you get angry, not to sin. The Bible says, in your anger, do not sin. It, it says, do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. And so, I, you know, I, in pastoring all these years, I've told folks many times, and, and, and I do my best to do this myself, this is really important for married people. Oh my goodness, if you're married out there and you're watching me, pay attention here. Don't, uh, when, you, when you're having a conflict with your spouse, and all married people have conflicts, absolutely they do, and uh, my wife and I have over the years, and, uh, and, and I've had to learn this. Uh, my wife has been far more better at this than me, like a million times better at this than me. And, but I've gotten better over the years at it, is, is when we're having an argument or we're at a point of conflict, um, not, not to shoot your mouth off at that time. Um, when we get angry with someone, anyone, but especially your spouse, I tell people, go to the neutral corners, you know, just, just have him, have the husband go in the garage, have the wife go in the bedroom, and just whatever it is, just neutral corners for a while and cool off and cool off, you know, and uh, because you see when, and then come, come together later and, and talk through the situation. I tell you what, if you start arguing, especially with your spouse, when you're angry, you're going to say things that you don't mean. And I tell you what, you know, uh, you can say things to somebody and those words can lodge down in their spirits and get stuck there and just hurt them for years and years and years. You know, there's an old saying, sticks and stones will break my bones, but words will never hurt me. But that's not true. I tell you what, sure, sticks and stones will break your bones. All right, that's true, but words can hurt. And, and I tell you what, you know, I, I've said some things to my wife over the years when we were arguing that... <sighs> I, I, feel, I feel terribly about it, and I wish I had never said them. And if I would have just bit my tongue, see, and went to the neutral corner, cooled off, and come back together, then I would have never said those things, you know. But I didn't mean them, but yet I said them. And, you know, once it's like toothpaste out of the tube of tooth, you know, toothpaste. Once that toothpaste out, you can't, you, can't get those, you can't get those words back, you know, and they can go in someone's spirit in, through their ears into their spirit lodge there and and even though you didn't mean it it can still it can bring such harm and hurt so so I tell you what when you're angry bite that tongue and don't say anything and go to the neutral corners cool off and then the Bible says before the sun goes down you know come back together you know before you go to bed at night come back together and uh, talk it out and, and communicate through it and I tell you what, you'll be glad you did. And uh, you'll be glad if you bite your tongue when you're angry because then you won't say things that you wish you hadn't have said. And then number nine, another time to bite your tongue is when you don't have something good to say. Remember the old saying, if you don't have something good to say, don't say anything at all? Well, I tell you what, that is true. The Bible says in Ephesians 4, verse 29 in the King James Version, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And so if you don't have something good to say, don't say anything at all. You know, and that, and that kind of kind of reviews the point I said a few moments ago when, when you're talking about someone and they're not, you know, we're talking, you shouldn't be talking about people, you know, you know what I mean. But but sometimes, you know, you're in a situation and somebody's name comes up or whatever, and and if you can't say anything good, don't say anything at all. That's so true. Just just bite your tongue, don't let any corrupt communication come out of your mouth unless it's going to be edifying, upbuilding, and ministering grace to those who hear it. If you, if you can't say something good, bite your tongue and don't say anything at all. And then number 10, a, a tenth area to bite your tongue is when you can't speak the truth in love. When you can't speak the truth in love. If you can't speak the truth in love, bite your tongue. Now, the Bible says, Ephesians 4.15, in the NIV, it says, speaking the truth in love. And so we need to, uh, we need to speak the truth 
in love. And if we can't do that, we need to bite our tongues. You know, I, I was trying to think some example, think of some examples of this, but you know, it's like like the lady wearing a, a bad hat, you know. I don't know, I guess ladies still wear hats. I I know, but if they do, you see a lady wearing a bad hat, you know, and she asks you, Oh, what do you think of my hat? <laughs> and you don't like it, well you don't want to lie. Uh you know <laughs> But do you want to tell her, uh, you know, your hat's ugly? I mean, you don't want to do that. Well, you know, I was thinking about this too. Our our legal system says we have the right to remain silent. So, so just just bite your tongue. If you can't say something good, don't say anything at all. Some of these points kind of overlap, you know. But if she's wearing a bad hat, uh, I don't know what, I, you know, she said, well, what do you think of my hat? I don't know, I might, I don't know if I didn't like the hat, I... I said, well, you know, you, you know, I like your dress. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. But uh, I'm kind of being humorous with this. But, uh, you know, you wouldn't want to walk up to somebody and say, you know, I, your hat's ugly. I mean, you, you know, I'm kind of trying to be funny with this. But, you know, uh, we need to speak the truth, but we need to do it in love. So I don't know this hat example. I don't know. I've worked my way in here. How do I work my way out? You know, I don't know if you... <laughs> Well, let's just move on to the next example. I don't know what you do with that. I just, just, uh, <laughs> you're going to have to pray about how to answer a lady. She's wearing a bad hat. She asks you what you think about her hat. I, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I was preaching in a, in a service years ago at a certain church, and there was a lady wearing this hat. She had this hat on, you know, and she was sitting on the second row. And, uh, and and I got so excited preaching in the crowd. They just, they I went in there to teach. They wanted to preach it. I got to preaching, and the only time this ever happened, the fellow went up to the organ. He started playing. I was preaching going on, and I got so excited. There was a lady on the second row, first seat, right behind my wife. She had this big hat on, <laughs> and I got so excited. I took my suit coat off. I wore suit coats in those days. Took my suit coat off and sputtered around. And I saw that lady's. Hat, and I threw it at that hat. I was gonna knock it off her head. And my wife, she, my wife should have been a football player, I guess. So she, she happened to jump up, intercepted that coat, pulled it, pulled it down. I was going after that hat. My wife saved that lady's hat from getting knocked off her head. <laughs> I don't know if I, I don't know. I guess that. So if you don't like a lady's hat, just take your suit coat off, throw it at her, knock it off her head. I don't know. But the point I'm trying to make, I'm trying to be humorous here. But the point I'm trying to make here is, you got to have a little fun as you go along here. Uh, or it can get boring and dry and dull. So we don't want that to happen. So uh, look, speak the truth in love. Um, you know, um, let's get off that hat example. I'm not going anywhere with that. But uh, speak the truth in love. If you can't say something good, don't say anything at all. But, but look at this. Think about this. I've learned this. Now let's be serious here for a moment. It's best to tell people how you feel even if it's blunt, as long as it's true, in a calm way. Now listen, now I've been joking around here about that hat, but listen here, this is, this is gonna help you. It's best to tell people how you feel about them in, in due season, in the right way, at the right time, the right place, even if, even if it's blunt, as long as it's true, if you can do it in a calm way. Speak the truth in love. And uh, we all deal with situations. We don't run into situations in our lives really where there's a bad hat example, but we all run into this situation where we have people in our lives, they're doing things to us that's irritating us, aggravating us, you know, harming us in some way, you know, just, have you ever met any obnoxious people? <laughs> I have. I try not to be an obnoxious person, but I've met some over the years you know, what I've learned about dealing with obnoxious people, uh, I mean, you like them, you love them well enough that you keep them in your life, but, you know, they're not that obnoxious that you don't distance yourself from them, but they're still in your life, they're obnoxious, and, you know, it's really best if, if you want to keep a, a, a friendship or relationship with that person, to just get them at the right time, pull them aside, even if it's blunt, and tell them the truth, and, and just... You know, tell them, hey, you're doing this, you're doing this, you're doing that, whatever it is. And just tell them, hey, it's offending me. It's it's bothering me. I don't, you know. And you speak the truth, even though it's blunt. You do it, you do it in a calm way. You do it in love. I tell you what, that can really go a long way down the road. Um, 
You know, and there's been a few times over the years where I've had had uh, some people in my life that you know I put up with their 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 tomfoolery, if you will, and you know their obnoxiousness for years and years and years, and and I never dealt with it in a calm way. I didn't want to offend them. I didn't want to, you know, uh, uh, just didn't want to offend them. Didn't want to lose their their friendship, and so I just let let their obnoxiousness go on and on and on and on and. A couple of times over the years, I have to have to admit, where, where have you ever had anybody push you to the point where you snap? <laughs> you, just, you just snap. And there's been a couple of times that I and I've had to repent, but but for for snapping, but I, I snapped and I went off on them. And, and I just I'm thinking of two specific instances right now where these two these two uh, fellows were just I mean just it was just obnoxious to the point it drove me it drove me batty. And, uh, and I didn't deal with it. See, what I should have done is, years before I snapped, I should have got with them privately and said, look, you know, I'm drawing a line here now. I, you know, you, you're obnoxious in, to me, or however you want to word it, and I haven't said anything, but now I, 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 I'm drawing a boundary line here, and I don't, if you go over it now, you know, it's gonna, it's, it could cost us, us, you know, being close friends here, you know. I'll still love you, but I'm not gonna hang around you. And if I'd have done that years years sooner, it, it, it probably would have never wound up to the point where I snapped. There's a few times I snapped on a, on a couple of people, and when I say snapped, I mean, what I mean by that is I, I just rose, I raised my voice, and I, I you know, I, <laughs> I just, or I, mean, I told them, you know, I might have beat my hand down on the table and, and, and told them, you know, just, just what I thought, and, uh, and, and, and yeah, I was speaking the truth in love, all right, it was the truth. Well, I was speaking the truth. It wasn't in love. See, I was telling him all the true things, but it wasn't in love. And, uh, uh, yeah. but if the point I'm trying to make is, is, is if I'd have confronted him earlier, I wouldn't have got to the point of snapping. Um, and so, uh, I just want to advise you to do that. You know, if you got people in your life that's driving you batty and you value their friendship, you know, you might, you might, pray about it and get with them and just tell them how you feel. It's better to do that and speak the truth in love than to get where I was and I let it go too long and then I snapped and what I, I spoke the truth to them but it wasn't in love and, and, uh, and, and I don't think it was as effective, uh, didn't have the, an effective result on them at probably as much as it would have been if I would have dealt with it and, and dealt with them in a situation where I could have spoke the truth to them in love. I spoke the truth to him, but it wasn't in love. So anyway, so I'll sum this point up just by saying when you can't speak the truth in love, if you can't do it in love, you're just better off to bite your tongue. Okay, and then the last two here where we need to bite our tongues is when we're offering our unsolicited opinion. Uh, the Bible says, Proverbs 18, 2 in the NIV, a fool finds no pleasure in understanding but delights in airing his own opinions. See, that's what a, a fool does. They, they delight in airing their own opinions. So, it, it, look, as it pertains to this point here, don't give, your, an, don't give your an opinion on something unless you're asked, okay? Don't give uh, unsolicited opinions. Um, just bite your tongue. And, um, and I've watched this over the years where people get in a situation and they start... They start just, particularly if you pastor church, as long as I have, you get people come in, they'll just start shooting their opinions out. And, um, and really, a lot of times, they don't even know what they're, they're talking about. They need to bite their tongue, but they didn't, and they just start giving opinions out. And uh, it, it's a very un... Uh, it's, just, it's, it's, just, it's, it's just not good. And the Bible says, a fool finds no pleasure in understanding... But, uh, but a fool will delight in airing their own opinions. And uh, like I said, I've dealt with this much over the years. And it's just no fun when you get people, particularly, that they don't know what they're talking about on a certain issue. And they're just firing out opinions. And, uh, and, and it's just an unsavory, unsavory thing. And so I, I'm just telling you, based on the Word of God, don't give your opinion on a situation in, unless... Uh, you're asked to give it. And frankly, even if you know what you're talking about, you know, um, still don't give an opinion unless somebody asks you. Um, I, I watched this on the golf course many years ago. There was a certain fella. 
he, he wasn't all that good a golfer, but, but uh, he thought he knew a lot about the golf swing. And whenever he'd play golf, uh, he would always, you know, go to the other guys in that group and that foursome or whatever it was, and he'd start trying to correct everybody's golf swing. And, and he wasn't that good of a golfer himself, and he was giving his opinion on what, the, you know, he, he even came up to me. He said, well, you know, you're not, you're not gripping the club right, or you're not distributing your weight properly, or your follow-through isn't quite right. You know, at last, he says, well, you want to... You want to beat him over the head with the golf club, but do it in love, but you want to beat him over the head. Anyway, the point is, he needed to just bite his tongue and just tend to his own game. It, 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 if he had spent as much time on his own game as he did fixing his own game as he did trying to fix everybody else's, he might have been a decent golfer. So let's bite our tongues when we're in a position where we're going to shoot our opinion out there. If it's not asked for, just be quiet. Keep, bite your tongue. Now, if somebody asks you, now that's that's different, you know. And uh, but now, if you don't know what you're talking about, go to that one of those earlier points. If you don't know what you're talking about, stay stay silent, you know. But I think you get my point. Let's don't give a bunch of uh, unsolicited opinions. It's very unsavory, very unmannerly. And then finally, um, another time to bite your tongue is when you're talking to a fool. When you're talking to a fool. Proverbs 26, uh, verse 4, in the NIV says, Do not answer a fool according to his folly, or you will be like him yourself. Wow. Don't answer a fool according to his folly, or you will be like him yourself. So when you get around people that are uneducated, uninformed, you know what I mean on a certain thing, or they're just foolish, and they start up going on about a certain thing, and you know, you know, they don't know what they're talking about. You know, bite your tongue. Just, you know, I, 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 I this has been, this has come up in different areas of my life over the years, and uh, particularly one area that's come up with uh, in my life is when I get get around people, like at a family gathering or something, you know, like Christmas, Thanksgiving, whatever it is. And, uh, you know, the Bible says the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. And so you start, you start getting into a, 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 a theological religious debate with uh, somebody that, that says there is no God, a, a fool. And the Bible says, don't answer a fool according to his folly or you'll be like him. You know, I've been in family gatherings where people, they'll, they'll, you know, they, they don't believe in the Lord, but they'll start, you know, giving their their opinions on, on, you know, certain biblical issues or whatever. And, uh, and, and, you know, I, and I'm sitting there now, when I was younger, I didn't, I, I didn't know all what I know now. And so I'd get right in the middle of, of, of the discussion and I'd start giving them, you know, by chapter and verse, right from the Bible. And we'd go round and 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 round. And, you know, but by the time we got done, they were no better off, and I was I was frustrated and frazzled, and and uh, it didn't cause them to come to Christ, you know. It just it just it was just a miserable time, and they're still just as confused and foolish as they were when we started, and I'm all frazzled, and and so what I've learned to do over over the years is this verse right here, Proverbs twenty six four: Do not answer a fool according to his folly. Fool has said in his heart there is no God. And so when I'm at a family gathering and somebody starts, you know, saying things that are just out of line with the principles of faith or out of line with the principles of the Bible, you know, I just sit there quietly and uh, don't say a word. I, I just may pray quietly for them or whatever. Now, if somebody asks me my opinion, I'll speak the truth in love. But otherwise, I just bite my tongue, don't say anything. And, and I tell you what, uh, uh, you're better off just praying for somebody uh like what we're talking about than trying to get into a theological debate to try to straighten them out, you know, when, when they don't even believe in God to start with. So I think you get what I'm trying to say. Uh, don't debate with a fool. Don't get into a debate with a fool. I, I, I used to, when I was younger, I'd get in all these theological debates with people, and, and uh, uh, particularly as it pertained to the baptism in the Holy Spirit, you know, and I got into all, I, I'm thinking of a friend of mine when I was younger, and and he thought the baptism in the Holy Spirit had passed away. He was saved, all right. He believed in the Lord Jesus Christ as his Savior. But he thought the baptism in the Holy Spirit had passed away. And I got into all kinds of debates with him. And, and uh, 
and that's been over 40 years ago. He just he he just didn't know. Uh, he, he just he just didn't know what the Bible said about the about the issue. And so uh, uh, I just you know, and after years of, de of debating him, I could see he was foolish on this topic. Uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So I just stopped. And I notice all these years later, as far as I know, he never has been baptized with the Holy Spirit. He's going to heaven all right. But but all, I, what I'm trying to say, all my debating with him did did no good. Uh, don't answer a fool according to their folly. On, on any subject, whether it's a biblical subject or whatever subject it is, just, uh, just bite your tongue. So, hey, I hope this helped you today. Uh, it's been a uh, blessing uh, being able to share this message with you. So I just want to conclude by saying, hey, you know, take these points. If, if I know that there's a lot of them, but the good news is you have me online here. You can go back and back me up and listen to them and meditate on them and uh, put these into practice and learn to bite your tongue. And I tell you what, you'll be glad you did. Hey, if you're out there and you don't know Jesus as your Savior, there really is a heaven to gain. There is a hell to shine. And the only way to miss hell and make heaven is to repent uh, of your sins and from your heart cry out, to the name of the Lord Jesus. The Bible says whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So do that now. You'll be glad you did. Let us know you did. You can contact us there. Uh, look on the screen. Our information is right around where I'm preaching here. And, and uh, if you receive Jesus, hey, reach out, let us know. And, uh, and we'll be glad to hear from you. Okay, God bless you. And we'll see you again next Sunday. Bye-bye.